I'm here to solve this acre puzzle by Eric Fox. Eric was also the creator of this style. For those who haven't run to this puzzle before, it was created roughly towards the latter half of 2020. The first blog post on Eric's own site was in December of 2020. And it's one of those styles that has enough interesting traits to it that it, it kind of, once you've solved a few of them, it takes off in your mind as a really creative style to construct. And so it was one of the ones that Persona Sashadri brought to us as a goal in the Shading Variety Collection to include in that set. I hadn't seen many of them before, so I was definitely curious to see why it was worth that attention and grew to love it through that book. And hopefully with you know an easy example like this and other acre puzzles in the future, you'll you'll grow to love it too. The only the only trait of where like GM puzzles had some debate was actually what to call the style. Obviously, we often respect the offers when we can, and we've kept acre for here, but internally we have had uh, some names used like disconnect four or things of that sort that may also describe what's going on here. And the reason Disconnect 4 was my mental name for the style is just like no four in a line or other kinds of variations we've done before. One of the key rules in the shaded cells, you can't have more than uh, three marked as unshaded. You can't have more than three marked as shaded. And so this will come up in different ways in the boxes in the grid in this uh, Tuesday level puzzle. The seven cell cages with just a single cell being shaded has to be placed in the single spot that's not going to get four unshaded in a row, which is the center. So these are the starting points of the grid. Knowing that we need one single connected black group means we have to reach up and down from these, but in doing so we make a three long stretch. So again, we mark off the other stretch that's not going to be three long. That finishes this one group, finishes this one group. We're going to have to come to the left here. Got to reach into this four box so it's going to have to take these three cells in a row and you can see pretty quickly that this is a heuristic this three um, or i guess disconnect four rule three in a row but not four in a row rule really puts some constraints in the grid quickly and uh, it leads to some nice patterns the same constraints down here uh, this rectangle needs to take four cells but it's got to start from this cell can't use this cell this two comes up i can't take both of these cells but i have to take these two um, this two is finished so I think that's a good start. Uh, in different ways, you can sort of see that this two doesn't have ways to take more than just one more cell. So it always takes this one. Can't reach over to those. This is where the geometries and the counts become important. As, as opposed to counting up the shadeds, you may want to count the remaining unshadeds. And eight and nine cells means there's one unshaded cell to place. Knowing we can't get four shaded in a row, that means the unshaded is somewhere in these three, which means these six must be shaded. That marks off this cell. That means that for this group to get connected, because it doesn't come through the two, it's got to come through these cells. That marks off these, including the unshaded that matters. These now are uh, marked off from what's forced above. Marking this unshaded leaves just six in this root group. This six has to come through and take um, some path, but it can't take two in a row here, two in a row here. So the only way this stays connected is taking these. Putting that in forces this for connection. This has to be disconnected so we don't get more than four in a row. We've got to take two more cells in this group, but if I take the top one, I can't take this one or that one, so I have to take these. Um, last cell to place is then going to come from recognizing how we uh, keep the remaining rules not violated. Um, here we've got three in a row, so we've got to put this one in, marking this as unshaded from either the left, right, or from top, bottom. This must be shaded, leaving the last cell unshaded. So an interesting style. It really allows for a lot of good theming and different use of patterns, different use of clues, shaded, unshaded being different forms of information. I think you'll enjoy the style. So please look for more of it on Eric's blog where it was created and also in some upcoming titles from Grandmaster Puzzles, but particularly the Shading Variety Collection that was just released. So thanks for uh, listening to this history of Acre and watching this uh, Shutters puzzle example, and we'll see you again soon.